Welcome back. We asked former Warden Thomas Bergami and former Associate Warden Denny Whitmore what other allegations had been reported that they disputed. One had to do with inmates who had reportedly walked away from the prison camp, an area for minimum security inmates. While News 8 did not report that story, Bergami and Whitmore dispute claims those inmates, quote, escaped. We never had anybody escape from the USP or the camp when I was the warden there and Denny was the AW. Uh, we classify escapes from a camp as walkaways, where inmates get up, leave their assigned area, and they walk away and they don't come back. There's no fence around 90% of the camps in the Bureau of Prisons, so there's really no fence, there's no wall they go over. Uh, and the way that was presented to the public made it, believe, made it seem like it was something out of Shawshank Redemption where the guy tunneled out and he went through a poster and all of this here. Uh, what I'll tell you is we had five different occurrences where inmates walked across a field to meet their significant others or friends at a local hotel and try to pick up contraband. And when they came back, we caught them and we held them accountable. We put them in special housing and we charged them with being out of bounds uh, and, uh, uh, possession of anything not authorized in most cases. So that was one big thing because that really scared the public. And I felt like the public is getting this half truth that there were these escapes and they were so egregious and dangerous men are walking around. First of all, we don't put dangerous men in camps. They work their way down or they're just initially assigned to a camp. So that was one big thing that was a complete fallacy to the public. In April of 2022, we told you about staffing concerns at USP Thompson. According to the union, one in six positions at the time were unfilled. This was still months after the staff union had successfully lobbied for a 25% retention bonus. While that bonus was removed when the mission of the prison changed late last year, a report from the Department of Justice released just last month notes issues of understaffing at USB Thompson. Now, we should mention that report also says it lacks reliable data on the exact staffing levels it requires at each institution. Now, according to the Department of Justice memo transferring Bergami to USB Thompson, Bergami was assigned to manage more than 500 staff and a facility that at the time held 950 inmates. This idea that Thompson is low staff, Thompson is understaffed, Thompson needs 25% retention bonus. Uh, that's significantly and completely not true. So when I first got to Thompson in about March of 22, we had a staffing complement of about 480 inmate, or 480 staff, or 460, 480. Uh, the highest we had gotten during my tenure was just over 500. We peaked just over 500, and then it started going down. There's a lot of turnover at Thompson. Uh, but I will say that all we had was 800 inmates when it was a smoke and the room. So the room, we had about 200 inmates that were like penitentiary guys that were afraid to walk any other yard, so they stuck them there. The SMU guys, which was about 600, they were the ones that were uh, more uh, problematic behaviorally. Uh, they were locked behind in their cell 23 hours a day. Uh, so there was about 600, five, 600 of those. But if you took the total staff complement, which was at its peak, 500, and our peak for inmates was about eight and change, that would have made it a better than one to two staff ratio. So in other words, for every one staff member, we had maybe 1.2 inmates. You wouldn't find that staffing ratio anywhere in the country, John. So the idea that we were short of staff was just nonsense. Uh, this was a play to get 30, 25% retention up to 35% retention. So what had happened was the staff had really no posts or no positions, so they would go around in little packs and they would just harass people, harass inmates, harass the small guys. Instead of helping to uh, meaningfully program them, they would harass them and abuse them. Uh, so 
Now, when it transitioned to a low, uh, I worked at many lows. I worked at 13 different facilities in my 31 years. I also served as the acting deputy regional director of the Northeast region. I've also served as the acting regional director of the Northeast region. In all of my 31 years, and I worked a couple lows, now Thompson's low, and it's got about 2,300 inmates. I never worked a low that had a staff complement, total staff complement of over 270 staff. Thompson is well over 350. And before I left, it was well over 450. So the idea that we're so short of staff is again, a mistruth. Uh, and that's, that, that whole play was to continue to get the 25% retention, which is fraudulent. To, to present this case to the American people and congressional representatives that fund the agency to suggest that we're so short of staff, give us our 25% is, is nauseating because you know what? There's places like USP Beaumont. There's places like USP Pollock. There's places like USP uh, Lompoc and many others that are really struggling, really with 60% of staffing that they're supposed to have. Uh, my former facility where I worked before Thompson at Fairton I was 30 positions short. I had a total staff complement of less than 300 with way more inmates than Thompson had. And we had to do it because all of the staff are trained to be correctional workers first. So everyone gets trained to do the same job. It's not ideal, but that's how it was set up and that's how it was designed. And our program continues after the break. Stay with us.